I feel like I didn't have enough time before my graduation to prepare me for what's yet to come. Hello, my name is Pavel Rozhov. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, I'd like to talk about one of the questions that I get asked a lot. Is it really a good idea to graduate PhD early? And to be honest with you, I don't have a straight answer. I have a couple of points that I'd like to get across to help you hopefully understand a little bit of my experience and what I think is best for you. So I wrote down a couple of points and the point number one is I did indeed graduate early and it does come with a bit of a baggage of an imposter syndrome. I graduated in three and a half years, which is by PhD standards quite fast. When I graduated, I felt like I wasn't sure what I was meant to do. Hopefully by the time you're graduating your PhD, you have some idea of what you might be interested in doing, like doing a postdoc, going to industry, what kind of industry position you might be interested in. But I had a bit of a blank slate. I had some notions of what I think I'd like to do and what I think I don't want to do. But it was very disorienting when I graduated because I feel like I didn't have enough time before my graduation to prepare me for what's yet to come. In fact, I did start looking at different jobs a few months before I graduated, but it was nowhere near enough time to secure a position right out of the gate. And that definitely came uh, as a very big challenge, uh, especially because, again, uh, since I graduated in February last year, it almost left me with um, uh, no chance to find any meaningful job because one month after coronavirus hit. But regardless, uh, being aware of an imposter syndrome that you might face going into the world beyond your PhD is something to be considered. To be honest, imposter syndrome does wear off. I think uh, it, it takes a little bit of time. In fact, I recently made a reaction video to my thoughts right after PhD. So I made a video of what I was thinking right after I graduated and then I recorded my reaction one year later. So a lot of things change, imposter syndrome passes off, but this is something to be aware of. I think everybody has some degree of that. You can't really escape that feeling, but I promise you it wears off at the end. So the next point about graduating early, it definitely felt rushed. Um, in some shape or form, right? Because again, you, you can't escape hearing that PhD typically takes four, four and a half, five years, and in some cases much longer. And uh, you feel like, have I done everything I wanted to do? And obviously in retrospect, you look at the, all the mistakes you've made in your PhD and you realize, oh my gosh, I wish I could have done this better or this differently. And you feel like all of that sort of led to like a PhD that was not as meaningful as it could have been. But I feel like it sort of uh, feeds back into the uh, idea of an imposter syndrome a little bit that it sort of feels like, oh, I, I sort of rushed through everything and I haven't really learned as much. And um, it, it wears off, to be honest, because you don't realize in the, in the thick of it, in the moment that you are actually learning a lot and the amount of skills that you get and experience that you get in PhD, even in a short period of time, can actually be quite a lot. But... It doesn't change the fact that um, when you are doing something very quickly, like a PhD in three and a half years, you, it doesn't prepare you for what's out there in terms of jobs, because ultimately you are still immersed into this environment that is very narrow, you're really focused on your niche, and um, there's not enough maybe time, spare time specifically, to fully understand what kind of career choices you have in front of you. You go to seminars, workshops, all that stuff. It's very great and very important, but you still feel like you're not quite sure what is the right fit for you. And it does take a bit of time, extra time, uh, where you can uh, just think what you would like to do uh, going forward. And I felt, uh, especially very early on, right after I graduated and as I was getting closer to graduation, I never had enough time to just sit down, think, imagine what my life beyond PhD would look like. Now, the kind of question about graduating early brings up an interesting question in and of itself, which is what's the optimal length for a PhD? Is there even such thing as an optimal length? Because everybody's project is different, every PhD is different, experience can be varied between universities, between even people within the same lab. And um, it's certainly very important to consider all of those like unique aspects of PhD, whether you're doing a TA or you don't have to do TA, what's the average length to graduate in a particular university and so on. But I felt like three and a half years, maybe a little bit under 
amount of time that would I would let's say recommend. Not that I have any real you know stake in the matter, but I I feel like four years, four and a half years, that's the optimal amount. And if I had a little bit more time, I could have fleshed out some of the questions that I was trying to answer, try to maybe publish some, build a little bit more papers, and um, overall would have probably had a little bit more time to prepare myself for what's to come. And to be fair, though, the amount of time that I did spend in my PhD, in retrospect, was just enough for me to get to where I need to go. Ultimately, it worked out quite nicely, I feel. And uh, I wouldn't change a thing. So take take my uh, optimal PhD length argument with a bit of grain of salt. One last point I'd like to make in this video is that when you try to uh, think about graduating, you want to set yourself up where you have a goal that you are uh, working towards throughout your PhD. Like example I'd like to make is, um, it's a personal example, that's not so much of a goal, but sort of a my mental state of mind, if you will, and uh, what helped me get to the end goal of graduating early in some shape or form was um, using stickers. What I've done is quite early on in my PhD, I had put a whole bunch of uh, colored stickers for each week going forward. And I, initially I calculated that the amount of colored stickers that I would have would be equivalent to three years of my PhD. So. I think I started my you know, sticker collection in uh, October 2016 and it, would, it was supposed to run me until August uh, 2019. So that was about three years. And um, uh, each week I would like peel one of those stickers and put it on the sort of on the different side where it's like account accounting forwards, not backwards. And then each week I would just do that uh, religiously. And that sort of helped me to I guess more subconsciously than consciously really to keep me in check of, okay, am I progressing uh, at the correct pace? Okay, time is ticking. What am I, what do I need to do? To be honest, it, I can't really judge whether or not it really helped, but that's something I've done. And ultimately I didn't graduate in three years. I had to actually add uh, a few more stickers that would for like another half year until February, 2020. But interestingly, by the time I started to run out of the original batch of those colored stickers, so around the summer of 2019, I already had a goal of graduating early next year. So that was that adjustment of like amount of extra stickers I needed to do was already sort of good enough that I had a mental plan for finishing off for sure. So I feel like setting a goal of how long you want your PhD to be early on is very valuable because it sort of puts you not on a trajectory into nowhere, but on a certain path that has a specific time constraint, which I think is very valuable. So this is one of the many questions that I get asked that I think about myself. And I hope this video would have helped you, some of you to think about your PhD length if you're thinking about doing a PhD. And if you have more questions about starting a PhD while you're in a PhD or going beyond into an industry career, by all means, please leave a comment down below. I look forward to uh, reading them and hopefully answering them on other videos. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this content helpful, please subscribe to this channel. It would really help me a lot and smash that like button. Thank you and until next time. Bye-bye.